Hello subscribers, followers, Robloxians, and random scum of the internet. Uh, this is Zolarketh, and I'm going to be giving you a little sneak peek on my new game, currently called Solar Sim. It's a solar system simulator, which is used to basically simulate the formation of an entire solar system, as you could probably guess. The version as of this is 0.3.0. Uh, it's in closed alpha because it's very unstable. Uh, but let's get started and I'll show you some of the really cool features of it. Uh, currently the menu is uh, completely placeholder. Um, it's by in no way finished. Uh, currently we have uh, plans for a save system set up, but there clearly is no system currently in place to save the games. Uh, there will of course be a loading system to go along with that, and I plan on having an in-game award system and some options that you can change around to, to play with and make every game a little different. So let's just uh, go ahead and select the save file here. You'll see this uh, configuration screen pop up. And this is currently the core of the game. Because uh, the game is a simulation, there's not too much that is user driven. It's more of an observation. However, there are a lot of things that you can change. The size of the solar system will change the how far out objects can be placed from the central star. Generally, I like to do large or huge. Uh, for these purposes, to speed things up a little, we'll, go, we'll stick around with average. Density of objects is going to give you just how many objects are actually going to be in your game. Uh, it can range anywhere from the low hundreds up to the thousands of objects. Um, so we're going to go with a medium density for the purposes of this simulation. Temperature uh, allows different uh, temperatures for your star. Uh, it will change how hot all of the objects in orbit are. So we're going to go ahead and set that to cool. Uh, the events in the game, currently there is only one event, and that is uh, an object entering from outside the solar system. So we're going to go ahead and set that frequent. It's kind of cool when that happens, and I'll show you how that works. So we'll begin here. You'll see a, a very nice little solar system form. It's just a swirling mass of debris around a central star. We're already going to see collisions happening. Those are pretty quickly, pretty quickly going to escalate. And this is how, you know, a lot of systems are formed. Of course, this simulation isn't as uh, isn't as robust. I can't simulate gas clouds yet or anything among that. However, as far as rocky worlds go, it goes does pretty well. You can see in this little informational menu, as I click on the minor planet, uh, all its information comes up. I can track it and watch it as long as I want. You can see the heavy metals, the age of the object, its temperature, radius, basically everything that makes the object that object. You'll see that a lot of objects will start to form where there's a lot of activity, which is generally around the center of the star. Looks like we got our big boy over here. I'm going to go ahead and name him big red one. So this guy's a good candidate for a planet because he's gaining a lot of mass. You can see there are quite a few collisions going on. Uh, there's a nice uh, message system in the lower left hand corner and what's basically winds up happening is you have you have it informing you of everything that goes on in your solar system from collisions to uh, status updates for different planets. Let's see. You can click on it you can track that object. This one, as you can see, is a planet. It's developed uh, some volcanic activity. Uh, you can see when objects collide, and you can see the outcome of that. So it's a neat little system. Uh, currently, there's not too much to it. I do have a time warp feature, which, which speeds up the simulation uh, quite, quite dramatically, really. Um, which does help a lot. I mean, you're not going to want to sit around and watch this thing all the time. I know that I have definitely gotten bored of it over time. Uh, it's a very, very cool, very unique system. Uh, and so basically what's going to wind up happening is you're going to get these planets to coalesce. And over time, let's see if this one started, you can start to see the thin layer of an atmosphere start to develop. And that's due to the volcanic activity that's taking place. The atmosphere is based on the heat that is produced uh, from the planet and from the star. So the game, it, it does have a couple problems uh, currently. 
the collisions aren't always too accurate, which is annoying sometimes. I mean, sometimes you'll see objects basically phase through each other, which uh, is never a good thing, especially when this entire game is based around colliding objects. Um, the other problem that you're going to see is that this. You're going to almost exclusively see, especially in smaller systems, one very large hot planet dominating the solar system and basically eating up everything in the inner ring which makes it really difficult for habitable planets like this to form uh, but it can happen and you know it, it sort of does show that life really and habitable worlds really are sort of difficult to form and it is accurate but we want to make sure that the game has a playability value that's not always just the exact same thing and so with the random events that can occur there are going to be things like orbits destabilizing, uh, planets maybe even breaking up, and sometimes even leaving the solar system forever, becoming rogue planets. I'm not entirely sure yet, but it's very exciting, and I'm really looking forward to how it's going to turn out. Currently, uh, there's not much functionality that the player can do, uh, and that's one of the things that I'm really going to be looking into on this, is what can the player do to influence it. And so what I've decided is to make two game modes. There's going to be the simulation, and there's going to be the sandbox. The simulation is going to be like this. It's going to be um, where you have uh, basically just a, a free-range simulation going on. You're not going to be able to control too many aspects. It's just going to be a raw simulation. However, uh, we are going to get to the sandbox mode near the end of development of the game. And what I plan to do with this is make it so that the player can control certain aspects. Like let's say you want to spawn in an object. In sandbox mode, I would make it so that you could spawn in any object you want. You could spawn in with whatever mass you want, however many materials you want. So you could really drive the simulation in whatever way you want. Basically play the role of God. And we've got a habitable planet here. It's Nice warm temperature, heating up. That's with that atmosphere. It's going to be nice, nice and cozy for the life that develops there, if any does. Uh, life is one of the big elements of the game. It has not been implemented yet, uh, but it's definitely going to be one of the focuses of the game. It's going to be on uh, having life that can survive, and maybe protecting it in sandbox mode. We'll see what happens. So I hope you guys enjoy what you see. I'm uh, obviously going to be working on getting all this out to the public soon. Maybe do an open beta, open alpha sort of testing soon. Obviously, I'm going to be pretty busy with Apocalypse Rising and, as well as my schoolwork. Uh, but I'm really going to try to get this out to you guys because I really think it's something that you will all heartily enjoy. And that's about it. Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at SolarCath. I'll try to respond to all the messages I get about this game, and hopefully I can get it out to you guys soon. And thanks for watching.